there's anything that you take away from today, take this. Editing is more about feeling than technique. Get comfortable. Kick back and allow your mind to explore. Through music, passion, and emotion, your edits will drastically improve. Remember, you are a creative practitioner, not a robot. So take your time and invest in your passion, and you will reap what you sow. Let's get into today's video. Now I think eight of these tips, maybe seven of the nine tips that I want to share with you in Lightroom Mobile are free and come bundled into the free software. So if you're new, if you're a beginner and you're looking for some skills, you're looking for some tools to better equip you in editing your travel photos, in editing any photo to be honest, but specific to travel because these are the types of photos that I absolutely love creating and this is the area of photography that I'm really passionate about. I encourage you to be comfortable whilst you're doing these edits, sit on the couch, if you're cruising on the bus, like this is a tutorial for those of you that actually wanna take the time to learn. The way that we feel has a huge, and the amount of energy that we put into it has a real big impact on the photo, has a really big impact on the art, on the work that you are trying to create. So be expressive. Let's start with a thing called dynamic range. <laughs> By definition, dynamic range describes the ratio between maximum and minimum light intensities. Much like audio, when you have a spectrum of sound, you have dynamic range in audio, the highest frequencies, and not in, but in tone, like tones that only dogs can hear, to the lowest, like frequencies that you feel, you know, frequencies that when you hear a kick drum or a, a really low frequency from a big speaker, it hits you, you know, it's like bam, it's the same thing. It's like these really dark frequencies with these really, really bright white tones. <laughs> so today we're gonna to address how we can see them visually in color. And you can do this simply in Adobe Lightroom. Tap or click on the, on the light section. You can scroll up and at the very bottom under exposure, contrast, highlights and shadows, you have white and black. This is how we're gonna set our dynamic range. This is how we're gonna be able to explore the photo and see how much range we can work with. Because at the moment, there's these really bright white sections where the sun's coming in under the water. And there's these really dark sections where I've captured right down below um, along that sort of coral bank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on the slider and then I'm gonna tap on the image and that's gonna show me, okay, wow. If I'm in the white section where the photo was exposed when I first took it with my camera, you can see that the whites are blown out. So if I bring the whites down, those pixels start to reduce and it starts to show me how much range I've got to work with in my whites. Minus 100, there's still blown out pixels, that part of the image still sucks, that's fine. At least I've created a little bit more range within the other part of the photo. Let's do the same with the blacks. So I tap on the slider, I tap on the photo, and you can see, over on the left there, I've got all that area crushed out. If I bring it down, I start to, I start to crush my dynamic range. If I bring it up, whew, I start to see that yes, I've got pixels blown out, but I've just created a little bit more range in my photo. There's a little bit more room to breathe. If I tap to show you the before, before, after. Now, this is just showing you what your photo is capable of doing, showing you how much of that darkest dark and lightest light is capable of moving. Um, feel free to crush it. Feel free to make it darker. Feel free to you know reduce these pixels. This is your style. This is where your creative license is like, bro, I understand the science. I understand what's going on with all these pixels floating around. I'm disregarding that. I'm just gonna edit with how I feel. The next tip we're gonna look at is a vignette. Super simple, pretty much available in every editing suite. But the reasons why you would use a vignette are to just direct an eye or to maybe address the specific stylistic use of a photo. And let's say you're using a really wide angle lens, an action camera, you wanna kind of push your viewer's eye back into the middle. I'm using a drone photo here. It's not the best photo, it's a, a raw HDR drone photo. But anyway, let's put, pop a vignette on it. So we go to our effects at the bottom and we slide up and we have these three sliders which I think are really powerful when it comes to vignetting. Obviously first is the vignette itself. So where we can either make it super white by increasing the vignette frequency or bringing it down. Now in this particular instance, 
I'm directing the viewer's eye to look in the middle. But at minus 100, it's just a little bit harsh. So what I wanna do is I wanna change the midpoint. I can bring that midpoint right in, so it's almost like a spotlight is on the middle. Um, and then I can go into the feather and I can feather it out so it starts to create this gradient. Or I can just push the midpoint out a bit. So I'm just sort of clipping the edges of the image. So I highly recommend using a vignette just to help guide your viewer's attention. So if I show you this before and after, we've gone from here, from here to here. There's more focus on the center of the image by using a very simple vignette. The next tool that I'm gonna run you through is the gradient tool. And unfortunately, this tool is only available in the paid version. However, let's check it out because it is very powerful for creating really unique and, and again, another tool that will equip you with your edit. So having a look at this photo here, it's a drone photo from Chile. On the very, very left of the image, I have this ability to select, to create selective edits. Okay, if I tap that selective tool down on the, on the left, and if I tap up in the right, I have these three options. I have a paintbrush, a circle, and a gradient, like a, a square. I'm gonna use the square, but let me just run you through what they do. On the left, you can paint in with the paintbrush an area of the image that you specifically want to address. If I tap that blue bit, I'm moving that around. That's just gonna show me what part of the image I want to, I want to edit. I don't want to have that, so I can then go to the circle. The circle is if I tap and hold, like tapping and holding, I'm able to create these radial um, selective edits, as well as being able to create the radial um, centered edit. If I tap this little inverse icon, I can then edit the outside of it. So just a cool little feature there. Um, I don't wanna create a radial edit. I wanna create a gradient edit to use the water here. So selective, tap to the top, go to the gradient, tap and hold, and you'll see. Now I can split my photo in two. I'd like to unleash the harness. <laughs> unleash, rip it off, rip the harness off. <laughs> and once you've created that pink area or the red area of the photo, we can address it. We can specifically edit it. What I like to do is to go in either to the color or the light and change it. So if I increase the contrast, you'll notice that the water is starting to get darker. We're creating, we're crushing the dynamic range. We're creating a little bit more of a drastic edit. And then if I bring the exposure down of the water, you can again see how much that has done by just changing two tools and creating a gradient. Tap to show you before, tap to show you after. So then I can move that gradient around. If I don't like the gradient and if I keep editing the photo, I can delete it. But it's just a way to create like more of a focus on that waterfall. Now I've got an image where it's like where the water is hitting the land, it pops because I'm creating that, I'm just creating some magic. <laughs> I'm creating some lateral magic. Uh, so let's say we go into our light and we start to change our exposure. All right, we're raising that exposure. You know, cool, it's starting to look overexposed. Increasing our contrast. We're really starting to mess up our image. Now, if we're not 100% happy and you wanna like bring that value back down to zero, rather than, you know, like bringing it with your finger and using the haptics of the phone, you can just double tap. And what I mean by haptics is I think it's haptics. It's just like the way that the phone, you know, like kind of clicks, you feel like a, a small little vibration in the mobile when you get to the middle. Just double tap on any of the values, either on the circle itself or on the, the numeric value. So really punch that contrast in. Not sure if I like it, I wanna just give it another go rather than trying to like tap back. Double tap on the 33, goes back to zero. Super simple, very effective for workflow. Sticking with this same photo, I want to address a philosophy or an approach that you can take with your photo. Before you even start playing with all these sliders and really like, you know, tinkering and tweaking and almost losing yourself in the edit, 
Think about this. What if you took away just one color and then worked with you know, the rest of the image? This is what we call muting tones. Um, and it's a way to essentially let your photo breathe. Some people or some people, like some creators use this as a way to also generate their identity, their aesthetic, their particular brand. Like, so what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna address the blues and I'm gonna mute the blues. So to do so in this image, all I have to do is I go to my color, I go up to my mix and I have this ability to edit the reds, the oranges, the yellows, the greens, you know, you can just tap on the, and so what, what I wanna do is I wanna dress the sky, right? I wanna get rid of the sky and I wanna make this more of a muted, desaturated feel. So I'm gonna go with the, the rich blue, like the, the royal blue, the vibrant blues, because I feel like there's more of them than the, the aquas or the cyans. So, I'm gonna just pull them out. I'm gonna desaturate them. I tap on that blue icon. In the middle, I've got this blue slider and I pull it away. Now you notice that as I pull it away, you'll, you'll notice that there's noise that starts to bring in. And what I mean by the noise is like, when I take away those blues and I zoom into the, whoops, this gets getting noisy. Don't worry so much about that, but just worry. What you can do is you can find the point where you like it or moving on to the next tip. So down in the details tab, you can click on that. And as you scroll up, you'll see noise reduction. Um, if I increase the noise reduction, you'll notice those grainy little pixelated. It's hard to see with just like, just staring at the image. But as I zoom in, you'll see, you know, these sort of pixelated parts of the image. What it is, it's like, it's just the fact that I shot on a camera that doesn't have that many pixels in it. So what noise reduction does is it starts to blend and starts to like, just, clean up all those little those little space those little pixels that kind of pixelated part of the image and if i go into the detail i can either i can either increase the amount of detail or really wash it out make it really nice and watercolory think about the stylistic approach because if you do reduce all the detail you'll notice just how much it affects too much of the image it's like it almost becomes like a watercolor thing but again break the rules if that's how you want your image to feel and you want it to be soft do that, reduce all the detail. But yeah, just showing you how you can address these little parts of the photo. So whenever you make an edit in, in Lightroom Mobile, let's say you increase the exposure or whatever, um, any kind of edit, any tweak to the photo, you can just tap and hold on the image and it's gonna show you the before. Look at the top of the screen, it says before, after. Not happy with that, I'm gonna double tap. We're back to our beginning. So that's just something, just a little something, something. When you're in the light tab, you'll see at the very top of the light tab, like that's color, that's light, there's this curve section. I tap on that curve and I have access to reds, greens, blues, and all three colors. Now, when we address all three colors, you've probably seen creators create a little S curve. To do this, you can create simple keyframes top for your highlights, middle for your midtones, and bottom for your shadows. If you bump up the top keyframe and bring down the bottom keyframe, that's how you create this S, and you're essentially raising your highlights and bringing down your shadows. Now you can tap down the bottom into the different colors and create the same keyframes for each color line. For an image like this, which has a lot of red hues, I can specifically address the red midtones and increase or decrease color variables. So my advice with the tone curve is to go easy on it. You'll notice that the more that you really hack into the tone curve, the more drastic these edits become. So be very gentle with it. If you don't want to dress the whole group of reds, like in the, in the dark tones, you can also just go into the color and you know create that and edit that specific colors, saturation and hue. Um, so yeah. Tone curve, something, something interesting. If you like this simple edit, you know, what we've done here, clicking, showing you before and after, might be a little desert series that you're creating. Top right hand corner, I, I recommend, I really urge you and encourage you to create a preset. I'm gonna call this like desert vibes. I never know if there's two S's, I think there's one. It's definitely not a food photo, so hopefully it's the Sahara. And there you go. And that way, the next time we go to edit a photo, let's say it's this photo here, I can simply start with presets. I can go scroll down to the bottom, tap on that preset section. Now, these are our Not Just Color Folk presets, but I should be able to scroll up and I've got these user presets and 
Where's desert vibes? Should be in here somewhere. Waterfall, marine, GoPro art, fire, desert vibes. There it is. Bump. Bumped it straight on before, after. Really easy way to just equip you with like a starting point. The hardest thing about, you know, getting into this process and this flow is just like seeing tones and colors straight away. In the description, I've got a couple of links. We've got some free presets there for you guys to check out and add to your Lightroom mobile straight away. So you've got a starting point. So after this video, jump into Lightroom, save those DNG files onto your phone and upload them so you can start editing some of your travel photos. If you wanna ask more questions directly to us, I encourage you to join our workshop email list. Um, that will just let you know when we're hosting our free workshops and you can come along and you can just join those Zoom sessions and ask questions. But if you have enjoyed today's video, punch the thumbs up button. Um, if you're new around here and you wanna, and you enjoy this content, consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next upload. You.